Unfortunately, it feels like Groundhog Day, rocket for rocket, civilians, mm. children caught up in the middle of it. Is there anything Australia can do other than the usual lines we hear? I genuinely worry whether or not we'll actually uh, have any desire or will to use our voice to encourage uh, calm on this in a long-term meaningful way. By that I mean, you know, we talk about supporting a two-state solution, but we don't see any evidence of progression on this. No firm advocacy or no firm pathway to get countries of a like mind to make this a reality. I, you know, you see some of these images that you just saw on the TV now that you'd shown to your viewers. Mm. You know, I... I don't think anyone wants to see rockets from one side harming Israeli families, and you certainly don't want to see a disproportionate response from the Israelis uh, affecting Palestinian families. And an average Australian who hears that Palestinian families are basically bringing themselves together to sleep in one spot because they're worried they're all going to die together uh, as a result of what's going on there, this is... If you've got a heart, you can't be affected by that. And we've well, got to be able to find a way through. What's doing specifically differently to well, what it is? Well, I think uh, it's taken a while, but the US has finally urged a ceasefire. One, I think we should be saying a ceasefire is really important on this. We're and we have to have thing. a pathway to seeing a two-state solution occur. And uh, what we saw that provoked all this, you've got to look back and think, what provoked all this in the first place? And we saw settlement activists trying to force out families from their homes in that part of the world. Also the response to Hamas rockets. Totally. As I said before, it's unacceptable. Like, we don't want to have... We, don't, we want Israeli families to live in peace and Palestinians to live in peace. I think it's important that countries who believe in this step forward, like Australia, working with like-minded nations, okay. to say we've got to get away got to move forward on this. You're here to watch your colleague, I assume, Jim Chalmers, mm -hmm. speech at the Press Club. Yep. He'll talk about states or income tax cuts and take aim at them. The benefit begins at $45,000 for these, so low-income earners. At what point does Labor think they become unfair? Uh, Jim today will focus uh, in particular on the $100 billion in new spending that we saw last week and ask the question, what are we getting out of it, particularly if people can't see any movement in their wages. In fact, there's a prediction of a cut in real wages and there's no tangible benefit for all that spend longer term and racking up a trillion dollars in debt. And on top of that, then arguing, as the government wants to, that it might spend, what, up to $130 billion for high-end tax cuts without really justifying how that should go. And I think we should ask the question uh, how that will all be financed. When you see the Treasury Secretary today, it's clear now what we're going to see the Treasury St Secretary Stephen Kennedy saying there's a $40 billion difference between tax receipts and what we spend on disability, uh, disability aged care and welfare support. Right, I so read that as saying that that's the likely target for cuts into the future while we're borrowing $130 billion well, for high-end tax cuts. Well, the Treasury Secretary doesn't um, 